I've had enough time to play around with the DV5 Loop Builder feature, which was just released. And this video is about my thoughts on its implementation and how easy it is to use. So this is just a complete review of the DV5 Loop Builder. So I was able to create this layout quickly. It's based on WooCommerce and it was very, very easy to use. In fact, let's go through and see how easy it is to use this Loop Builder. So let's start off by creating um, equal columns. And in this column here, we can, um, okay, we can start off by adding an image like that. And below this image, we can add a text module like that. And let's just duplicate this like that. Now, what I like about this is straight away, if we select our row, for example, we have our loop feature here. It's just below the background, okay? So we can go in and loop this, right? But in our case here, I want to loop the uh, the columns. So I'm gonna select my rows and then I'm gonna come into my column here and then I can go into my loop and activate it. So you can see now that I have my loop here, but it doesn't have my content yet. And this is where now the implementation of the loop builder is really, really awesome. So now that I've activated my loop, I can now go into each and individual item and select my dynamic content. So for example, in this case, it's gonna be the featured image. And then for this text here, this can be the title. So I'm gonna come over here and then I'm gonna say um, loop post title. Over here, I can go in and this could be my except. So let's choose our loop except. And you can see here the text um, except here compared to this is different. So this is pulling from the actual blog post. So this is very, very, very easy to use, very, very easy to implement. And then you can go in and start stylizing it, you know, adding the background color, rounded corners and so on. But what I found really powerful with the loop builder is the fact that I can actually go in and create all my elements based on a group because it, a moment ago I did it using the column, but I can actually do it using the group. So if I select my group here, now inside that group, I can now choose what I wanna have in there. So let's say I'm gonna start off with uh, a heading. So let's say I wanna have a heading. Uh, I can also go in and say, okay, I need an image like that. Select my image. And then below this image, I'm gonna say, okay, I want some uh, text as well. Okay, so I can continue on and add more and more items. So I can uh, add another text module as well, like that. Okay, so with this now, you notice that we have the group. So everything is within the actual group. So with the group selected now, and I'll select it one more time so you can see that, I can change the whole group into a loop like that which is very, very uh, exciting because I can now go in and start adding all my dynamic content. So let's start off with our image here. So in fact, first of all, we need to select what loop type it is. So in here, again, it's set on posts, but I can go in and choose pages, media, projects, you know, products. Uh, now products is showing because I installed WooCommerce, but if I had, let's say, Tutor LMS, this could also show all my um, elements for my courses, which is brilliant. So for the sake of this tutorial, let's just use post, okay? It's just easy to use that. And of course, we have all the other features here. I can actually select this from a specific terms. So I can say I want stuff from categories A, and this will only show category A, which is fantastic. I can also go here and exclude certain um, specific terms. I can also uh, include specific posts. So I, I mean, they, uh, it's very, very flexible. So first of all, let's just uh, add all our content in here and then we can go in and start stylizing it. So let's start with our heading here. So for our heading, we're gonna go into dynamic content. And this is very, very important because you wanna make sure that this is dynamic so now I'm gonna choose my loop post title, which is right here. And you can see it has updated. Next, we're gonna add our image and I want my image to be dynamic. And I can go in and choose my dynamic, uh, no, my loop featured image, okay? Next, I can come over here and I can say, okay, I want this to be uh, a dynamic of 
publish date. So I can go in here. Now I can also go in and add, you know, some text before it. So I can say published on, which makes this uh, make sense like that. So now it's showing our dates, which is fantastic. I can go in and say apply. I can move on to the next item and this is going to be my excerpts. So I can click over here and say loop except. Now, do you see how, I mean, how easy this is as I'm going through this? Okay, I can hit apply. So now I have a loop that has all my content and this is within the group. I can even add more, more and more items here. I can even go in and add another group within a group and then lay out my content in such a way that I have, you know, things side by side because now we have Flexbox and so on. So as, as, as we uh, go ahead and do this, I can see it is very, very easy to implement. Now, if I want to, um, you know, line up things, you know, properly, I can also go into my group settings here. Now, I'm not sure if I can come directly to my group and then say direction. Yes, I can, but notice what happens now. The way it looks is uh, a bit weird. So you have to try out different layouts for you to get the layout that you want. So in this case, we need to go into the column. So I'm gonna come back over here to my row settings. And then in my columns here is where I can go in and say, okay, layout, direction, and now it's looking the right way. Okay, so you just have to play around with that a bit uh, until you get uh, the uh, layout you're looking for. So as you can see, this here now is my complete group. I can go in here add a bit of a background color. And you can now see that it is applying pretty much to all of it, okay? So if I want to, I can go in into my design here and go into spacing. And I can add a padding of, uh, let's say, one rem, okay? Now, if you're using, let's say, Sidecrafter Pro, this can be done using uh, using our class-based system, okay? So let maybe let's go to two. That might look much better. Okay, now you can see it's starting to take, sh uh, to take shape. I can go in, add rounded corners. So I like the fact that it is very, very easy to use. Now, if I duplicate this, you can see now that my layout, you know, has changed. And then I can, um, I can pretty much go in and uh, align this the way I want, okay? So let's get rid of this. Now we're back to how we were. Hey, by the way, if you uh, haven't signed up on to uh, Divi University yet, this is a community of Divi users. Go ahead and sign up. There's over a thousand members now. And, you know, there's a lot of uh, posts and, you know, tutorials and people asking each other questions and so on. So go ahead and sign up. And also, uh, perhaps maybe you find my content uh helpful. If you want to buy me a coffee, just head over to diviuniversity.com and then click on buy me a coffee. Now you can choose, of course, how many coffees you want to buy me. Uh, so there is an option, one coffee, two coffees, three coffees, or you can pay what you want. Okay. So just head over to diviuniversity.com. All right. So now that we, uh, uh, we have this, you can see the flexibility is amazing. The flexibility is amazing. So it's very, very easy to use. Now, the more I look at um, how this was implemented, perhaps maybe some of you can help me here. I'm going to add a button module, okay? Like that. Now, with this button module, what I find uh, confusing is the fact that, in fact, let me just bring it to the top. Let's bring the button to the top. All right, let's go on to the layers. <laughs> Uh, sometimes, you know, it does, you know, mess around. Okay, there we go. Boom. Okay, now the button is on the top. All right. So, you know, with this button selected, I noticed that we also have a loop here on the button. So, this for me is very confusing because what really are we looping in this button here? Because it's just the button. And right now it's referencing posts. I get it. But what within the posts are we really looping? So my question is, why do we have a loop on a button? Isn't this supposed to be on uh, specific, um, specific um, areas where we can create uh, elements which can be looped? 
because seeing a loop on an individual item to me doesn't really make sense. Now, maybe I'm missing something, I don't know. So again, if I were to, uh, let's say, add another module, let's choose another one, let's say uh, call to action, right? So we have our call to action here, we have a loop, right? So it looks like this loop is pretty much on every single module. Now, why is this the, the, the case? I don't know. Maybe there's an advanced way of using this or maybe there's a feature which is waiting to come um, later on. I don't know, but I don't see the use of the loop element. Now, I know it's, it comes across as a negative, but this is a genuine question. I can see how I can use it on a um, on a row. I can see how I can use it on a column. I can see how I use it in a group of items like what I've just demonstrated here. But on an individual module, Mm, that's a bit tricky. That's a bit tricky. So anyway, this is one of those uh, reviews where, because you know, I've been very critical about uh, some of the DV updates and I speak my mind based on uh, my usage of um, DV. And I know some of you may think that, I, you know, uh, what I'm saying is, uh, is a bit harsh, but, you know, I've been using DB for a very long time and there's certain things that I would like to see. And sometimes they may not be implemented the way that I thought it would. And I speak about it. In this case, I don't have anything negative to say about the loop builder. And that is <laughs> very, very amazing because it just works. And that's what I like. It just works and it makes a lot of sense. So there's nothing you know negative I can really say about it. It is a fantastic implementation and uh, it works. And as we start building our websites with uh, with more features like let's say, or even more plugins, I noticed that in uh, Nick's example, he had uh, um, events that could be looped. I think that is fantastic. And I'm sure the moment we start adding other plugins in here, we are going to see even more powerful features. I know I haven't even uh, tried advanced custom fields. This is a massive tutorial coming up very soon. This is going to be huge because if we can loop all this, all this, all this custom content in an easy way, like what I'm doing right now, I mean, what more can you ask for? This is really, really amazing. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think in the comments box below. This was my quick review of the loop builder. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you again in the next one. Take care.